We do a lot of cakes and cookies and family recipes. Julie Cobley's kids like to help in the kitchen. This day, they're making banana pudding. It's a treat Keegan and Caitlin enjoy, and they generate almost no trash in the process of making it. All of the boxes and containers will be recycled. We really try very hard to constantly be aware of what can be recycled and what can't be recycled, rinse it out. They know that they stack things here. The Cobblies participate in Irving's curbside recycling program. Julie got started after a relative told her about it. It didn't take any effort for her. And, and once I saw that, it was very, I just went home and I went, I'm going to check into Irving's program, see what it takes, and it, you know, again, took nothing. For the kids, it has become habit, just part of the home routine. He's only six, so, and he's really good at that one. Does this go in the blue or does this go in the white? And Keegan is not the only one with questions. Sometimes you have questions about what exactly can go in. For answers, we went straight to the plant that handles Irving's items, Green Star Recycling in Garland. We wanted to know whether some items could go through this complex sorting system that gets recyclables ready to be made into new products. We started with one of Julie's concerns. I've always heard don't put pizza boxes in because of the grease, so we don't do that. People have a lot of questions about recycling. One that comes up is food boxes, one that you might get whether you order a pizza. Yeah, exactly. A lot of these containers now that are coming post-consumer will have a little bit of organic um, residue in them. As long as the main issue, whether it be the pizza, the donuts, water, are out of the container, it's okay to go ahead and throw these in your recycling bin. Another one people want to know about phone books. You definitely, see the glue yeah. on the spine and everything and wonder, can it go on the line? It can go. Definitely recycle your phone books. Another thing we get around the house, items that have cardboard and plastic, such as this tissue box. You can go ahead and throw that in. Uh, this, once again, will come out in the pulp process at the mill, so not an issue. Jars. All of us have food jars in our kitchen, and this one, it doesn't look like even was even rinsed out. So is that a problem? Uh, it, it, it is a problem if it's full. The jar has a lot of organic substance in it. But if it's minimal like this, it's not a big issue. It comes through, goes through the glass breaker screen, and then it's sorted out of the stream. Uh, then it goes to the glass plant where it's cleaned up. So small residue amounts, not an issue. Full residue um, is an issue. What about the lid? The lid will separate through the screen once it hits the crusher, the glass breaks. The tin will go off on the magnet. So. so this can go on the line as is? As is. Back in the beginning of recycling programs, they wanted a little cleaner material stream to work with because the technology wasn't as advanced or evolved as it is now. Uh, now they've got technology and tools in the processing that can deal with most of those what would have been imperfections originally in the recycling programs. Labels don't need to be taken off, lids don't need to be taken out, a little bit of fluids left in a bottle isn't a big deal. Those advanced processes are also meaning there are more items that people can recycle, as we found out back on the processing line. This right here is a, a soup container, but a lot of us have juice cartons that are just like this that have the lining in there. Yeah, exactly. This is what we call an aseptic or a tetrapack container. And uh, we have the technology to capture this material now, uh, send it to mill, where they'll actually have the, the technologies there to separate this. It's a brand new material that we've added to the recycling program. Our processor can now handle them. They've got a brand new market for them. We're excited to be able to offer that. That's just one more material that doesn't have to go to a landfill. So what I'm hearing from you is really a lot of things are recyclable that maybe people don't realize are. Nine times out of ten, if you're buying it post-consumer, we can recycle it. But that does not mean just put everything in your blue bag. Certainly, there are places Mickey Mouse would rather be. In fact, all around, there are reminders of some of the odd things that people have tried to recycle. First thing that comes to mind is a prosthetic leg. We saw a bowling ball around here. Bowling balls, basketballs, tennis balls, golf balls, all sporting goods like that. It's not just annoying. This piece of metal could hurt someone here. The problem is this gets into a stream and then it becomes detrimental to the employees, get kicked out of the stream and become a hazard. And it looks like party streamers, but it's actually videotape that has jammed up sorting machines. That tape will wrap around a bearing and it's just like sandpaper. It's a similar problem with plastic shopping bags. They wrap around screens, causing loads to become contaminated. By virtue of doing that, they generally don't end up being recycled. That's why at just about every step in the process, crews keep a close eye out for any foreign items. The cleaner um, that, that comes into the plant, the better it is for the company, the better it is for the municipalities that we share the rebates with. They'll have a 
bag full of recycle, but then they'll dump a plate of food in there, which contaminates you know most of that recycle anyway. Irving Solid Waste Services crew members also see the mistakes people make. Occasionally we'll see a blue bag that's full of grass clippings and while you can compost your grass clippings, that's not a program that we offer to our residents and we can't recycle those materials obviously through our curbside program. So what does go in your blue bags? Most everything that you have that is a container at your home is recyclable, whether it be plastic, paperboard, cardboard, aluminum, steel. Along with those aluminum and steel cans, aerosol cans, plastics coated one through seven with the exception of styrofoam, all kinds of paper and cardboard are accepted. That is a lot of material that can go in the blue bags. You know, you just get them at the rec center. And Julie Cobley sees the difference it makes in her home. Before we really started years ago, you know, I had a lot of trash, but now it seems like I, I, I have one bag of trash a week, maybe two, depending on if we have, you know, family over and stuff, but and I always have one really big bag of recycle and sometimes more than that. So, um, it, yes, it does make a difference. She has even taken it a step further, keeping recycling in mind when she shops. You know, the yogurts, these items, the steel cans, the plastic now for the fruit. When we buy eggs, I buy them in cardboard cartons so that I can recycle the cardboard. You want to put some more cookies on top now? It has all become second nature for the Cobley family, and they appreciate the city giving them an easy way to make a positive environmental difference. I think Irving does a great job with their recycling program.